Ready? Let's now describe the surface anatomy landmarks that we can see on the forearm. Let's describe first the bony structures. Let me grab my pen in here. Okay, so look what we can palpate on, and we did this we did this last class. We can palpate on, do it, palpate your medial and lateral epicondyle. You know now the medial and the lateral epicondyle are uh, where the muscles of the forearm attach. So in the medial epicondyle, the anterior uh, forearm muscles and in the post uh, lateral epicondyle, the posterior group of muscles. Now, these two epicondyles should be aligned at the same horizontal line than the uh, olecranon behind. It should be, if you trace a horizontal line, both epicondyles and the olecranon posteriorly, okay, should be aligned on the same uh, horizontal line. If not, something there is dislocated. Now, let's see what we can see on the ulna. Okay, on the ulna wall, we can find, we can feel the olecranon in your elbow. Now, passing su uh, very superficial here on the medial epicondyle, we're gonna find here the uh, ulnar nerve. Remember that when you uh, bump this uh, or hit this part of your elbow, you can feel that electrical current, right? That pain going through the medial side of your forearm all the way to your arm, uh, to your hand. Um, the styloid process of the radius, okay? When you grab your forearm, the distal portion of the forearm like this, you can feel on the radial side, this is the styloid process of, you need to touch it, of the radius, and in here, there is the styloid process of the ulna. Um, on the radius, we can feel the radial head. Just again, touch the lateral, the lateral epicondyle of the humerus, and right there, you can see a dimple, a depression in here. Press your fingers in there, you rotate, you per, uh, perform uh, pronation and supination, which is the, the movements happening at the proximal uh, radio, uh, yeah, radio ulnar joint, and you're gonna feel the head of the uh, radius moving in there. Uh, the styloid process already told you, you can touch the distal part of the radius in the lateral portion of your of forearm and almost the entire ulna, you can touch it in the posterior aspect of the forearm. In the rest of the forearm, not because they're covered with muscles. Now, there is a cubital fossa that we're going to see on the next slide that is formed by, and we are not gonna see all the structures in here, but a horizontal line passing through both epicondyles, okay, the lateral and the medial epicondyle. In here, this is the pronator terrace, and this is the brachioradialis. To feel the brachioradialis, just what is the function of brachioradialis? Flexion of the forearm. So flex the forearm, you're gonna feel this muscle in here, that's the brachioradialis. To feel the pronator terrace, grab now the medial side of your forearm and perform pronation pronate your forearm and you're going to feel the brachioradialis. So that anteriorly, that depression in between the two muscles and superiorly, that imaginary line is the antecubital or cubital fossa. In there we're going to find uh, veins and oddities that we're going to describe on the lecture. Uh, another bony structures that we can feel in here is in the anatomical snow snuff box, we're gonna describe that later. Now, muscles. Well, let's see besides muscles, what we can find in here. In red, well, this, in this temple is where we're gonna find the, or touch the head of the radius. This is your olecranon. This is the head of the ulna. The, that 
is the head of the ulna, okay? And a little bit proximal to that and anterior is where you're going to find at this level the styloid process uh, of the ulna. Uh, bunny, bunny, bunny. Well, bunny marks in here the medial and the lateral epicondyle of the humerus. Now, in blue, I'm going to show you the muscles, muscles that we can see or through the skin in this guy, well, we can see the entire extensor compartment, okay? Just contract, extend, try to extend with resistance the, uh, your, your wrist and you're gonna be able to feel the extensor muscles. Now try to extend it and you're gonna feel all the uh, flexor muscles in the anterior surface of the, of the um, forearm, this group of muscles. In there, there are several tendons that we can see uh, in, uh, let me go before that, before going to the next slide, I want you to see again, here is the brachioradialis, this is the pronator terrace, and here you have the cubital fossa. Okay, so let's go to the next slide, so, so you can see the tendons of, not white, of the flexor muscles in the anterior compartment. So when you make a fist, you're gonna be able to see the tendons in there. You see them, okay? Some of you might have instead of two, just one tendon because the palmaris longus is absent in most of 70% of people. So you might have only one. So if you have two, the lateral one, the same side of the thumb, that's the tendon of the flexor carpi radialis. The one in the middle or lateral to that one is the palmaris longus tendon. And this one is the extensor, I'm sorry, the flexor carpi ulnaris tendon. Uh, you can see also in here how it protrudes the PC form. Now, in the dorsal or in the posterior aspect of your hand, when you to extend the hand and you're going to see this. This is called the anatomical snuff box. And snuff box because people used to put there the tobacco to, to sniff. So it is formed by these tendons in here. This is the extensor um, uh, pollicis longus. In here, we're going to find two. First, the extensor pollicis brevis and then the adductor uh, pollicis uh, longus. The floor, what you can feel, the importance of this snuff box is that when you palpate the floor in between those tendons, you can feel the scaphoid and tra uh, the trapezium and also the styloid process of the uh, radius. Okay, if the styloid process of the radio is not, you cannot feel it there, hmm, what happened? We're gonna discuss it in class. Fracture. Uh, pain in there can, uh, can indicate fracture of the scaphoid or styloid process, usually a scaphoid. Uh, also here, when you extend the, uh, your fingers, you're going to be able to see the tendons of the extensor the extensor digital muscle. I think that's it. In here, in this guy, he's just showing us again. We already, I think we already did this in last week. But in here, we can see this is the brachioradialis. All of these compartments are extensor muscles. You can barely see the anatomical snuff box and the tendons of the extensor digitorum. Head. Yes, the head of the ulna uh, and the styloid process of the radius. Yay! So this is it with the muscles of the an, an, uh, anatomical surface, uh, surface anatomy of the upper limb. Next module, we're going to discuss the same thing, but in the lower limbs. See you later, alligators.